Hello and welcome to The Last Tackle. In the studio we've got Kev Brown and Adrian Morley, which is quite apt because the World Cup is back. Yes, great news this morning with matches played in Australia and some in Papua New Guinea as well. So a World Cup in Australia in 2026 for the men's, the women's and the wheelchair game. Uh, Kev, I think this is great news because we've got two games against Samoa at the end of this season. It, look, we've got a pathway now for International Rugby League at least for the next four years. Yeah, and we've already got a little bit of rival with yeah. Samoa from the last World Cup. Tonga are obviously big players as now. There's, there's the Australians, France and New Zealand. So to go over there and have something in the calendar, not only for the fans who, who really have an appetite for this, but the players as well. They can set the sights, circle the uh, calendar, train really hard, get the form up and hopefully get on that plane because as a player, it was the best moment of my life playing in a World Cup in Australia. It, you, you call them test matches and there's no And your team tests. was just a tap away, wasn't it? Yeah, and that, and that still hurts. And I do, I really believe that the respect that we've got now from getting closer and closer, I, I think at short, with Sean Wayne in charge, I think we can go there confident. It starts, you know, it starts building for that. But, um, you know, there's some great young players coming through and I, and I think we've got a big chance. Moz, you've always said to me that you've loved pulling on the England shirt, you love pulling on the Great Britain shirt. And obviously we've had uncertainty in International Rugby League in the last few years, and obviously COVID didn't help. We had a successful World Cup over here. This is great for the players now, isn't it? They know in two years' time there's a World Cup. Oh, it's fantastic. You want the, the best players playing for the best countries, showcasing just what a fantastic sport Rugby League is after the... Disappointment and a bit of embarrassment, really, from France pulling out of the of the uh, of the World Cup. Fantastic that we've finally got a World Cup on the agenda. Great that it's down under. I agree with Brownie. I played in two World Cups, one in England, one in Australia. And uh, I, don't get me wrong, I was very proud to, to represent England anywhere, but uh, and in England. But to play in a World Cup down under, I think, is the is the pinnacle. So very very excited, and uh, yeah, I just can't wait for it. And Sean Wayne will be absolutely delighted, won't he, Kevin? His timetable now is all going to be about 2026. Yeah, and they can actually build. I think they can blood some players, you know, in the mid-season internationals and the end-of-season internationals leading into that. I think he'd be looking at players who, who might have played in the academy test uh, recently against France who, who might be able to step up as well. So it's, it's all about the, the current players now, but also with a one eye on the future. I know Sean Wayne... He is uh, he's so passionate as an English coach. He will be looking across everyone and it'll almost be a clean slate for the players in Super League and International to get themselves booked on that plane. I think it's great for the Super League because as a coach now, you can certainly say to some of the young lads, can't you? Right then, if you perform, you never know. You could be going to Australia in two years' time. Ma massive incentive. And uh, I agree with Brownie. The way England have been performing over the last few years, they've got a lot more credibility and respect from uh, other nations. And uh, yeah, what, what a character dangle that a young player saying you could be, be down under representing England in a World Cup against the best in the world. So uh, yeah, I mentioned before, very, very excited. Uh, yeah, bring it on. How important is it as well as this for the women's game? Because that was one of the highlights of the World Cup and the wheelchair game was fantastic. So how important is it? That's two aspects of the game. It's huge. It's, it's, we, we as a sport are, are more inclusive than, than any other sport, I believe. And, 
to, to have that pathway now and that dream for, for the females coming through and for you know the people in the wheelchairs playing that uh, concept of the game too, it's really important that they can test themselves against the best in the world. I think the English rugby, I've, I've not seen a sport transcend from ground level up as quick as, as rugby league has done. And, you know, with, with the people like Jordy Cunningham at the at the forefront of it, I really think that gap's closing now from England, Australia, and New Zealand. But we've got to test ourselves against them over there. And we go back to what Moz just said. There's no bigger test than going down under the main sport um, and you go and test yourselves. That's why it is a genuine test match. That's why it's such a a draw and everyone wants to do it and they'll be training so hard in the pre-season at the end of this year and the end of next year to get themselves in a great shape for that. The, the, the women's game is the fastest growing element of, of rugby league so yeah I agree you want to you want to test yourselves against the best. Uh, the wheelchair sport was the best kept secret in my opinion. I, I'd never yep. watched the great deal no, of it isn't and I watched that in the World Cup it was just uh, it was another level and uh, you know we want to be exposed to that as much as we can you know tournaments, World Cups uh, I'm looking forward to that as much as I am the uh, the men's and the women's. And sticking with the international theme, we've got a Super League game in Las Vegas next year. The Warrington Wolves versus the Wigan Warriors in the Betfred Super League. Tickets went on sale this morning. Let's hear from the Warrington CEO, Carl Fitzpatrick. I know you're an Elvis fan, you look all shook up. Uh-huh. No suspicious <laughs> minds about this trip. This is just good for the game, isn't it? Sell it to me. Sell it to you. Okay, in Las Vegas we have Caesar's Palace, okay? I believe we have the most gladiatorial, brutal sport. We have real life gladiators, okay? So they're gonna be playing in the most high-tech, incredible, amazing stadium. The party starts on Monday and it finishes on Sunday. Make sure you are there because we're putting Betfred Super League on the global map. Tickets are on sale now. Wigan Warriors versus the Warrington Wolves in Las Vegas. How good is this? Awesome. I, I, All right, I, I know I you want to go, but how good is this? <laughs> yeah, it's brilliant. It's, it's, um, it's rock and roll, isn't it? It's, it's selling the sport. I love the concept last year. We've got to do a show from Vegas, haven't we? We have, we have. <laughs> and we were saying before, we've got You're an ex-Warrington player. You're both available. I play for both, so we are available. <laughs> Yeah. But for the sport, uh, to, to take it to America and, and just have it at the same time as NRL games, the women are going, going over as well, it's just going to sell our sport. And there's already so much appetite in America from last year. I think half of you know England have already booked the tickets and ready to be going over. <laughs> Yeah, the, the NRL have got to take a, a bow, really. You know, yeah. it, it was their idea. And last... It was Chris Rudlinski watching it at home. Yeah. Thought, I want a piece of that. Yeah, and well, emailed well, the NRL and well, saw well, it. Why not? I mean, you know, we are uh, one, of the, one of the leading competitions in the world. And uh, it's, it's great that Super League are involved now. Uh, these two teams, Warrington and Wigan, they actually went over in the 80s and, and played a game in Milwaukee. Yes, but it wasn't uh, a, it was just um, a showpiece game, wasn't it? It was, yeah. It wasn't a Betfred Super How League. How did you play no, it? it wasn't. <laughs> no, no, <laughs> I was water boy. But no, uh, <laughs> but I mean, if they can crack the American market, that's what it's all about, you know, uh, some, some new eyes on the sport, but very, very exciting. And I know a lot of... Uh, Spectators used to go, when the boxing was on, for example, they used to go over, not even get a ticket, they used to go over just to enjoy Vegas. And I'm sure there'll be a lot more Brits going over than, than, than Australians, even though there's only one game on. And uh, I'll hopefully get myself a ticket and I'll hopefully be over there myself, Mark. Uh, I went to the press conference two weeks ago in the centre of Manchester where we had an Elvis impersonator as well. It was fantastic. Um, what stuck in my mind was what Matt Pete said when he was asked about this. He said, yeah, it's great. But he said, it's also great for the community game, uh, you know, the youngsters, for Wigan, for Warrington, for the whole of the Super League. And I really like that thinking from Matt Pete. Well, and, and, and Matt Pete's thought process is exactly the same as Chris Radlinski's. I think what they're doing as a club now, and Warrington and some of the big teams, they're almost dragging the sport up and making everyone stick with them. Yeah. They are a class act. I think what he did this weekend with the shows at Robin Park and getting... Noel Gallagher there and everyone. It's not just about rugby. It's about making, put well, Wigan on the map. In the entertainment business, aren't we? Yeah. And that is it. And there is no better place yeah. to go than Las Vegas. I ring Chris Radlinski now and he answers the phone, rock and roll lifestyle. So, <laughs> um, no, it's great. It's great for the game. It is great for the kids. There's so many kids so excited about not only going watching their team, but going watching an NRL game in America. 
Um, so if we can get on it, me son wants to I'm come as say, well. We're, we're going to have to go, aren't we? So I'll ask our sponsors, Bet Fred. We're going to have to go, aren't we? We've got well, to go now. <laughs> you've, got a, you've got a passport, Moss. I've got a passport, mate. Yeah, I can, can manage that. <laughs> uh, right then, sticking with Wigan, well, let's be honest, no one saw this, but well done to Hull. Yeah, it was the uh, upset of the round. Uh, no one did see it coming. Um, re- really pleased for Hull. You know, you want to see uh, as competitive a Super League as we as we can get. And out of the top six teams, four of them actually got beat this weekend. So shows you, um, you know, that the, 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 the low, lower teams are knocking off the big boys. But yeah, I don't know whether, you know, Wigan weren't particularly good or, or Hull were very, very good. But uh, the result says Hull got the two points. I don't know. I think, I think one of the differences, Hull started really well. Yeah, yeah, I think. Try uh, early on, pressure early on. Yeah, well, that, and they're that, able to soak up that pressure at the end. Make, makes a big difference, doesn't it? And I don't know whether uh, Wigan possibly went there with a bit. You know, it's only Hull that mentality, or they might have had th- their eyes on uh, the following week, where it's perceived as a as a, as a bigger game. Either way, uh, well, fair play to Hull. They, they got the two points, and uh, that'll do their their confidence, the world of good. And uh, yeah, they, they needed uh, needed a win like that to give them a boost. How did you see it? Well, I, I thought Wigan went there and, and sort of overplayed a little bit initially. I, th- I think they have to overplay now because the patient approach that they've had and then they give Bevan French the ball and Jay Field who blows it open, they've almost, they have to find a different way of playing and it didn't work at the weekend until the last sort of 15 minutes when things started to click. But I really like what Hull FC have done with the young players. They've had a real tough time and they've probably been in too much too soon. But your Denise Bamford, Jack Charles, Logan Moy, Davy Litton are really starting. They, they will die for that badge, won't they? The young Hull players, whenever we've seen you know, Hull doing really well, it's been the Richard Arms and, and the Kings and, and the people like that playing well for their hometown now. They've got that again. I think they're a couple of years off where they will be, but it's um, full credit to Simon, uh, Simon Griggs for turning it around. Uh, David Litton has scored out for the season, unfortunately, with a serious knee injury. Uh, wish him well. Uh, right, how do Hull build on this now? Because obviously they've got no chance of a playoff. So how do they build on this? Well, they've got to keep doing what they, what they did at the weekend, which is throwing the ball around and actually having fun. It, it was really good to watch. And thinking about next season already. Thinking about next yeah. season, but actually playing, playing and putting smiles on, not only their faces, the fans' faces, I thought... The, the big difference for me this week was when they got in front, they didn't shut up shop and try and hold on. They actually carried on playing, which got them, I think it was 24 points to four lead at one stage. Yeah. But I thought at 12 points to four, they was going to start um, constraining up and, and, and looking not to lose, but they didn't. They moved the ball around and they put more pressure on and they deserved the win, Mark. Mm. And Wigan, just a blip? Yeah, I think it's just a blip. I mean, it'll do a whole wonders for, for their confidence uh, even though there's no pressure on them to make the playoffs I think it will, will relieve a lot of pressure for, for the players and for, for, the, for the coaching staff at the club so uh, well done to all but just a bit of a blip for Wigan you know I still think they're, they're the best team in, in Super League and, and by, 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 a bit, by a fair bit at the moment as well so it'll be really really interesting to see how they, how they back up from that defeat um, next week but we'll, I'm sure we'll talk about that when they're uh, previewing yeah. And before we talk about Saints, let's give some credit to Warrington. How good was that performance? Fantastic. You know, it was probably one of the best performances uh, of the season. And when you were down to 11 men for, to keep a team as uh, is, potent... Is that the difference Sam Burgess is making now? A uh, bit more Yeah, a bit, more, a bit more heart, a bit more grit. And uh, yeah, I just thought the way they defended with 11 men was uh, very, very commendable. And, you know, there was... When they got to 12 10, you know, there's not much in it, but for them to, to carry on again and uh, and seal the win, uh, the manner they did, I thought it was fantastic. It was uh, great to see, you know, after Wembley, I think Warrington had a bit of a dip for, uh, for a few weeks, but now they seem to be back up there, definitely. Uh, right, we've got to talk about a team that won four and a bounce, won the World Club Challenge. That's a fourth successive defeat for St. Helens. What's going on? Do we know what's going on? Well, there's a couple of things going on. Obviously, the injuries, yeah. um, they're decimated at the moment. They've got young players debuting almost each week. Um, but this is, this is a different feel for them mentally. They, they're not used to having crisis meetings and losing games and losing games back to back, never mind four on the bounce. So it's a real difficult period in um, you know, an inexperienced coach's journey. Paul Wellens, Wellens is a fantastic coach. 
but he's got a big, big job. I think you know they they need to win this week because the fans are getting frustrated. And as many excuses as we give them, Saint Helens just aren't a team that accept uh, losing games and losing five on the bounce. I can't remember the last time Saint Helens did that. I think you'd have to go back at least six or seven years when Nathan Brown was in charge and and ultimately lost his job. Um, we talk about Paul Wellens, but they've lost. I mean, he's still part of the coaching setup now, but they've lost a huge personality or a huge character in that dressing room in James Roby. They have, and, and could that you, be one of the? Oh, de- definitely. You, you can't you can't underestimate the value that James Roby brought. I don't think any coach needed to speak to James Roby because he just give you an eight out of ten regardless every week, whether you're winning or losing. Daryl Clark's a different player. He's, he's X Factor. He's, he's you know, when he plays well, he's unbelievable. But when he doesn't play well, it's not an 8 out of 10 like a James Roby, poor performance. So I think, yeah, I think they're realising now, not only are they missing the injured players in Wormsley and Metauti and, and Hurrell and players like that, but the players... Yeah, Hurrell's out to end of the season. The experience that got them through these tough periods, um, it's, it's a real challenge over at Saints. Um, and over the next couple of weeks, it's not going to get any easier. I don't think they've got many bodies back. I think Matt Whitley might be back in in the short term because he was a player that was fantastic at the start of the year because there's a lot, lot of rugby to be played but if you want that home playoff St Helens has got a bit of work to do yeah they have I mean everyone wants to finish in the top two don't they St Helens looked like they were, were favourites for, for a long time so you know if they keep suffering the losses uh, you know they won't make you know they won't make certainly won't make the top two but yeah it, it's funny when you do have a few losses it affects confidence it affects form and then it's, you're starting a bit of a a downward, downward spiral there, so uh, it's important they, they, uh, they stop the rot uh, and get back to winning ways, but I agree with Brown, it's, he's got a tough job on his hands as uh, Paul Wellens. Let's talk about one of your old clubs, Leeds. Leeds 12, Hull KR 20. Leeds started well, didn't they? Got the first try. Uh, Mikey Lewis is excellent, two late tries from Hull KR. Um, I know there's still a lot of rugby to be played, but I just thought looking at that game, that was the kind of game Leeds had to win if we were going to get into the playoffs. Yeah, you're right. Uh, but I mean, Hull KR have they're going fantastically well this year, aren't they? They're one of the form teams. I think they've got their eye on probably second spot, you know, uh, be, 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 behind Wigan, definitely. So there's and it's them, realistic as well. Them, 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 them and Warrington, so they're they're one of the uh, one of the stronger teams, the teams in form. So you, there was always going to be favourites against Leeds, but I think it was spirited uh, for Leeds. You're right, but I think now they they did suffer the the defeat. I agree. I think it'll be very very tough to to make the top six. Uh, but, but I still think there's, uh, there's a lot to work on there at Leeds. How do you solve a problem like Leeds Rhinos? Well, they weren't far off. They weren't far off at all this week. Fossi Tua, he, he, he did everything but put the ball over the line. Um, you know, a kick play at the end undid him and then Jez Litton, you know, in the last minute just sealed the game. I don't think they're far off. I think they, they probably had a few players a little bit underdone. Andy Akers came back from six weeks out. He, he looked like his legs fell off at the back end of the game. Cam Smith the same. But... I thought for 65 minutes of that game, they were the better side. Um, but all okay, yeah, they showed what character they've got under Willie Peters. They don't know when they're beaten and they've got so many players that can open the game up in Tyrone May, Mikey Lewis, Lytton, Petter, Ricky, Nile Evans. You can never think you're safe and, and ultimately the leads run out of energy. Uh, but I, I think they'll sneak into the six. Right, OK. Interesting stuff because I think it's probably six from seven now, isn't it? I think we can... Unfortunately, discount Lee. It is six from seven, isn't it, for those top six spots? Yeah, and and I think they've got that in them. I think you know they've been well, very very before. close. Yeah, and, and <laughs> that, yeah, that yeah. is what yeah. I think that muscle memory. I think they'll be speaking about that. They've still got Ash Anley and a few people in there who was around that at the time. Uh, I think Brad Arthur, after being there for a couple of weeks, this is probably his first week that he's actually coached. Uh, I, I think they've got a genuine chance. And very quickly before we preview this weekend's games a word on Craig Lingard he's uh, turned it around hasn't he he has turned it around and uh, I'm, I'm really pleased for him it was uh, some uh, really really disappointing and embarrassing defeats at the start of Super League and it was going to be when are they going to get the win but the, uh, yeah, they've, had, they've had a few wins of note recently St Helens away was a, was a fantastic result for, for Cass but yeah, to, to get the win against their top six opponent in, in Catalans was, uh, was great and you know the, Winning, you know, you, 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 you turn up to training with a smile on your face, a spring in your step, and it's just a knock-on effect. So they'll be, uh, they'll be confident now, whether they play weekend, they're going to be, uh, they're going to be right up for it. Well, still, 
everything to play for as we enter the home stretch. And in the middle of August, it's Magic Weekend. Magic weekend. Just a bit of breaking news as we record this show. Adam Hill's MBE has been endorsed to become the 33rd president of the Rugby Football League in 2025. He'll succeed Sir Lindsay Hoyle, the Speaker of the House, who's done a brilliant job. He'll be the first Australian to hold the honorary position. It's great news, I think, Adam Hills. Yeah, great news. And, and Huge I'm... support of the game. Oh, he is. He was brilliant on Channel 4. <clears throat> When I was at Warrington, he was always down there. He was playing for the PDRL side. He loves his rugby. He knows all about the game. And I think it's a great appointment from the rugby league. Yeah, I agree. Uh, great guy as well. Uh, but, you know, he's got rugby league first and foremost at his heart. And, uh, yeah, I think it's a, a fantastic appointment for, for the rugby league. I think he'll do a sterling job. And can I just say, and I know this from personal experience and dealing with him, Sir Lindsay Hoyle has done a brilliant job as president he has been outstanding his tenure as president right let's turn our attention to the uh, betfred super league this weekend as she starts on thursday huddersfield giants versus the leeds rhinos yeah and a rejuvenated huddersfield giants under luke robinson i think he's uh, he's got his first win at the weekend which was a was a great result against salford he'll be looking to to build on that, uh, but I just think Leeds are getting better and better as well. I think it's going to be a cracking game. I don't think it'll look like a, uh, a game that's... Well, if you size. think Leeds are going to sneak into I, the playoffs, they need to win this. Yeah, I they don't. do, and I think they will win this, um, but I think it'll be a cracking game. I don't think it'll be a game that looks like two teams outside of the playoffs. I think it'll look more like two contender sides, but unfortunately, I don't think Huddersfield have got enough in them to beat Leeds. Huddersfield against one of your old clubs, Leeds Rhinos. Yeah, I think the, the win last week changes this uh, fixture entirely. So Huddersfield will be will be confident, and uh, but I, I agree with yourself. If if Leeds have any aspirations of making that top six, uh, they they need to win it. So uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to this one. Should be a, a belting game, but uh, I agree with Brown. I just think Leeds will have a, a little bit too much, but it should be a, it should be a great game. Uh, Friday night, we've got an absolute cracker. It's a repeat of a Challenge Cup final. It's a warm-up for Vegas. Wigan Warriors versus Warrington Wolves. Yeah, this is the fixture I'm looking to uh, most most out, out of the weekend. Uh, two massive rivals. They did meet in the Challenge Cup, as you say. Uh, just been announced that they're playing in Vegas, so everything's aligning for this to be a, a real blockbuster. Uh, I think... I mentioned before, after the, the Challenge Cup final, I think Warrington went on a bit of a... Uh, the form dropped uh, quite dramatically. However, uh, a real confidence-boosting win last week against St Helens. So they'll go there confident. Uh, how will uh, Wigan bounce back from their defeat? So, uh, flip of the coin, this. But I just think uh, I just think home advantage will see Wigan home. But uh, I think it's going to be a fantastic game, uh, real competitive. A huge game anyway, but even bigger now on the back of last week's results with Wigan losing and Warrington winning at St Helens. Yeah, and, and in a weird way, that's probably the worst thing that could have happened for Warrington, that Wigan have almost been poked, uh, like poking a burr, isn't it, when, when Wigan <laughs> lose. I think Matty Pete will be you know, grumpy this week and getting stuck into his players and I just think Warrington Wolves, they're the form team of, of Super League at the minute. The resilience that Sam Burgess has brought, that's the difference for me. They have trust and belief and whether they go in front or behind, it doesn't seem to matter now. They follow the process. I think the combination of Dufty and Williams, the, the, they're almost telepathic how they're playing. Um, and I think Warrington go there and win this game. I, I, at the, you know, probably <laughs> three or four weeks ago, I didn't think that would be the case. But without key personnel for Wigan, they're not in as good form as usual and Warrington Wolves are humming. I, I think this is the best opportunity that any club will have going to Wigan um, in recent history. You won't be getting invited to Vegas by Wigan, will you? Um, Hull KR versus London Broncos. Well, Hull KR have just been going about the business, uh, one of the farm teams of Super League and you know, London Broncos, you've got to admire the effort they put in week in, week out, but they're just lacking quality personnel really, so I can't see anything other than a 
than a whole cow victory. Yeah. Whole cow going great guns as well. Yeah, not not only on the field, it'll be a sellout again, uh, which is unbelievable when you think how many fans London will take. Well, we spoke about early on, whole cow definitely realise they're in the entertainment business, don't they? They are, and and Paul Lakin, who's who's gone in there as chief executive, has a massive part to play in that, and and Willie Peters and the brand that they're playing, they're so enjoyable to play. I mentioned before the X factor that they've got. They're not happy just trundling it up and winning by two points. They want to throw the ball around. Uh, and, and they'll be too good for London, I'm sure, at Hull KR uh, with a packed house. Uh, Eurasia will be singing before the game and um, I'm sure they'll win the game. Also on Friday night, Lee versus St Helens, which is obviously a huge game for St Helens. M- massive That's four game. on the bounce. Yeah, could, could, be, could be five on the bounce, but Lee, I think they've got a few of their uh, players back as well, so it's a massive, massive game for, for both clubs. Uh, yeah, it's... Uh, I'm not, I'm not too sure about this one. I think home advantage might 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 be a tell, telling factor, uh, but yeah, again, the, the, there'll be a uh, big big crowd there at Lee. I just think I just think Lee Lee will uh, Lee will take the spoils here. Yeah, I, I do I do agree, uh, but I just can't see Saints losing five on the bounce. I think there's too much quality in that side to go down five times on the bounce. Um, but saying that, I watched Lee last week against London, and I thought Lachlan Lamb again was just sensational. For me, he's almost the best scrum half in the competition. Uh, consistently, his kicking game is yeah. terrific. The way, he, the way he controls the side and, and assists with so many tries, I think it'll be a really tough ask uh, for Saints, but I do think they've got the character and resilience to go there and bounce back. Salford Reds versus Castleford Tigers. Yeah, this is an, another interesting one. When, when these two sides have faced, it's been really close. Uh, I think the 1-1 this year and... And the, and the time that Salford won, they got out of jail really late. But um, Casa playing, since Tex Hoy has gone to the club, I think that's been the signing of the year for Craig Lingard. They've been much better, but Salford, I know what Paul Rowley's like after a loss. Um, we mentioned Matty Pete now. Paul Rowley will be really grumpy this week, the fact that they lost to Huddersfield. And I think at home, they'll just have too much in attack for Cass. And then finally, Catalan Dragons versus Hull. But before we talk about that, Sam Tonkins is back. Now, that was a surprise. Well, it wasn't, it wasn't. I remember when I finished playing, uh, after about four or five months, I felt fantastic because you're not getting whacked. Well, that's what he said, hasn't he? His knee has felt great. You're not getting whacked playing and your body rejuvenates. And if he feels he can still uh, perform, and, and Steve McNamara is a smart coach, he wouldn't... Uh, put him in if he didn't think he could do the job. So I'm not hugely surprised, uh, but you know he's, he's, he's a smart character, is Sam, and uh, I know he wouldn't put his hand up if he if he weren't ready. But very very exciting. It's, you know it's great to have. You know he's a genuine superstar um, of our sport. Yeah. Great to have him back. You know even if he just plays the rest of this year, I think it's fantastic. But you know people are talking about if you're going all right, what about next year? But he said let's not get too. Uh, carried away, but I think it's great for the Catalans. I think it's great. For he some. might just help them in the final furlong and in the playoffs. Might I think yeah. sometimes what you can't underestimate is the value of someone who is that good and has been that good when he sits in the dressing room. The confidence that he gives his teammates. I think if he'd have played last week, I think Catalans beat Catala- uh, beat Castleford. I think just his game management and his smarts yeah. and the fact that he'll give everyone confidence because he's on the field. I think it's a great move and I can't wait to see all the players who he's been talking about. It's easy for us, we're finished, but he's going back <laughs> after saying he should have done this, should have done that. So he might not be bruised over the last few months, but he definitely will the next few. <laughs> and how do, you, how do we see the game? He could be in the squad for Catalan Dragons versus Hull. Yeah, well, all I see, they, they've probably had a big party this week for game, you know, a win and it's possibly the toughest away trip in, in, in the calendar going to Catalans. With the excitement of Sam, I just think, you know, the Catalan Dragons fans will turn out, they'll have an expectation. They raise the standards and I think Catalan win this by 20, 30 points. Yeah, same. Uh, as, as good a win it was for Hull, I just think it's too too tough a, an ask to go there, Catalans, uh, and, and get the win with, with all the hullabaloo which will obviously surround Sam. So Catalans victory at home. Right, gents, I've enjoyed your company. Let's just finish on a high with the uh, news we started with that we're definitely going to have a World Cup in 2026 for the men, for women's and the wheelchair in Australia. How big is this news? It's massive. It's, um, it just gives us something to get excited for, to put in the diary. We've got Vegas that 
you've promised us a trip, so we'll go <laughs> over to that. <laughs> and then we want a trip in Australia as well, but right. it will be brilliant <laughs> I'll try my uh, best. To, to get on that plane. I can take you to Salford Cass on Saturday if you want. <laughs> I'm busy Saturday. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree. You know, represent your country is the, is the highlight of, of your career. To do it in a World Cup, down under, doesn't get much better than that. Very, very exciting. Can't wait for, uh, for two years' time. Thanks very much, fellas. So, Fred, if you're watching, we're available for Vegas, we're available for Australia, and we're also available for Salford Castle, or at least me and Mozart on Saturday. Thanks for watching.